today we're going to be talking about DNRS. I started this for the treatment of POTS and CFS about a year and a half ago and I'm going to be talking about that. So basically a year and a half ago I was really unwell with POTS and CFS and I was looking for something to help and I came across this DNRS system and basically how it works is that it uses principles such as neuroplasticity which is the brain's ability to adapt and change in order to make you physically better. So it changes the structuring or rewires your brain to work better. That's the idea behind it. So I'm going to be talking about both my experiences with it and about the treatment of POTS and CFS in general. So I'm going to just straight off the bat, the most important thing to say is that this did not work for me, although it's not a direct reflection of the DNRS. And just because it didn't work for me doesn't mean it won't work for you but there is a reason for that which I'm going to explain. So it's not just like a medication which works for some and it doesn't work for others and there's not much reasoning behind it. There is a reason why this didn't work for me and I wanted to make this video so that other people are not falling into that trap by accident and buying this thing which actually isn't going to help them. So the reason this didn't work for me is because it turns out that my POTS and symptoms of CFS are actually caused by a genetic condition. I have a connective tissue disorder which affects the collagen in my body. So my POTS and my CFS symptoms, all of that originates in the body and is a problem with the body. For other people, POTS could be caused by a problem in the brain with the way that the brain is sending information. So it depends on your causes. And at the moment, I'm sort of diagnosed with two things which sort of cross over and are very similar, which is Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and Hypermobility Spectrum Disorder. If you've got POTS, I would highly recommend that you look these things up. A simple way to tell whether you have it is that you will be hypermobile and then you would have comorbidities such as POTS. So definitely look that up. With hypermobility, meaning that your joints hyperextend, so you can see this isn't a straight line, um, that can be an indicator of the hat. Won't give you a diagnosis, but it can indicate that maybe there's a connective tissue disorder causing your problems, in which case your problems don't originate in the brain, and so a treatment for the brain isn't going to fix that. I don't know if I've explained that well, I wanted to get the science across for this because I was trying to explain to my friend that for something like fibromyalgia, which is caused by a chemical imbalance and problems in the brain, that would work. Whereas for a physical problem, I was saying, that originates in the body, it wouldn't work. And she was saying, well, fibromyalgia is physical, um, but the cause, the cause is very different. That's what I'm trying to say here. And actually pain resides in the brain. So that makes sense for fibromyalgia patients to be in excruciating pain, even though the source of their pain isn't in the body, it's just in the brain. So they feel it in their body, but it originates in the brain. Whereas a connective tissue disorder, the problem is in the body and then gets sent up to the brain, but it's in both places. I hope that makes sense. So I just wanted to say, if there's a chance that your POTS and CFS is caused by a different condition, most commonly a connective tissue disorder, then I don't think it will be as helpful as you want it to be. Just because, for example, with POTS, for me, my blood vessels are too stretchy because of the collagen problem. So no amount of neural training is going to change my blood vessels and same with other symptoms which I won't get into. So yeah, that's my point. However, like I was saying, I do think this has the potential to be helpful for people who don't have a genetic cause and for problems that do originate in the brain, which can be some cases of CFS and POTS, definitely fibromyalgia and a few other conditions, which I won't go into because I just don't know enough about them. And fibromyalgia actually I don't have and I don't know much about. Um, I was just using that as an example. But what I also will say is that I did find it quite a helpful tool for dealing with chronic illnesses. So it didn't take it away from me, but it was quite a helpful tool for dealing with it in reason and with caution. And the reason I say that is because 
there's a lot less focus on your illnesses and with body scanning for symptoms and things like that and with illnesses that are caused by problems in the body you have to be careful because sometimes you really need to listen to those warning signals because if it's telling you that there's a problem then you do need to act on it if that makes sense so I do think this can be a great way for managing symptoms with caution and I also think that if you don't have a genetic or physiological no, that's not the right word because the brain is physiological. If the condition is in your body, then no, I don't think it will help. I get a lot of people saying, I have EDS, will this help me? And honestly, yes and no, but I would say primarily no for physical help, but mentally, yes, is what I would say. However, for physical problems like fibromyalgia, which just originate in the brain, it can be helpful. So I hope I expressed and explained that well please message me or comment if you have any more questions because there's probably things I missed. But I felt that this was a really important point to make. Um, I certainly would have found it helpful a few years ago. Give this video a like if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.